Welcome to this episode of 10 Minutes with Sam, and this is Akshat Singh. The Rohingya crisis made global headlines back in 2017 and is considered to be one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. Today, we have with us Ambassador Rajiv Bhatia to discuss this crisis. Ambassador Bhatia has had a distinguished career in the Indian Foreign Services and currently serves as a distinguished fellow at the Gateway House. He has also previously served as the ambassador to Myanmar. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much, Aksha. Uh, so the format of the show is fairly simple. We have about 10 minutes and we'll try covering as much ground in it as possible. I understand that the topic is vast, but we'll just have to keep it in 10 minutes. All right, sir. So um, without much further ado, uh, let me get right to the first question. So it's been about five years since the Rohingya crisis began and resulted in the displacement of millions of Rohingyas across South Asia, mostly to Bangladesh and some to India as well. Uh, so, sir, do you see any resolution of this crisis and uh, how do you see COVID-19 has affected it all in all? Yes, uh, as you know, this is a complex question. It has uh, certainly erupted in a big way five years back, but it has a long history. Mm -hmm. And the bigger uh, milestone came in 2017 when over 700,000 Rohingyas living in Myanmar had to uh, flit to uh, Bangladesh and now almost over a million Rohingya people are uh, in Bangladesh, you know, living in difficult conditions, causing a lot of stress to Bangladesh as such. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, solution to this problem? The solution is that they must go back to their homes. Mm -hmm. They would like to do this only when there is safety, security, dignity mm -hmm. and respect for their rights. So fundamentally it is really for Myanmar to create the necessary conditions. Mm -hmm. Bangladesh and Myanmar have to work together. They tried to do so. They had an agreement, but that agreement has not been implemented. Mm -hmm. And in that context, now we look at COVID. COVID is a big uh, issue. Uh, so many people living in a congested kind of conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, very uh, small figures mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, of uh, COVID cases and deaths, mm -hmm. uh, which means that it has not either affected them uh, very extensively or more credibly uh, because there have not been enough tests. So mm -hmm. we do not really know. Mm -hmm. So it is a problem that causes concern, but it is there with us uh, and it may be there for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So we know that uh, the core reason for this crisis uh, was because Myanmar refused to take several uh, of the Rohingya people back uh, where, wherein they actually originated from the Rakhine state and uh, these people uh, migrated to either Bangladesh and some of them even came to India. So sir, uh, can we think of an active role that India plays in this entire scenario? Uh, in my view, uh, I think an active role is uh, really uh, not feasible. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it is true that uh, a few thousand uh, Rohingyas have come into India and uh, they are being uh, addressed in a different fashion. Mm -hmm. But the brunt of the problem is borne by Bangladesh, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, fundamentally, it is a problem uh, between Bangladesh and Myanmar. Mm -hmm. It is for those two countries to solve it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is their responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, India's role can only be direct. It mm -hmm. can only be a friend and neighbor. It can be to help uh, Bangladesh to deal with the burden of refugees and it also can be to help Myanmar to be able to welcome them back with the facilities and logistics. India is doing both of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so effectively India is for a speedy uh, and uh, sustainable kind of repatriation of these people back to Myanmar. But beyond that, uh, there is really uh, for the two countries themselves to resolve the problem. Mm -hmm. So, sir, um, so, uh, certain other countries in uh, the Asian region are trying to actively engage themselves. Uh, case in point being China. We see that uh, China has tried to increase its strategic and economic stakes in both Bangladesh and Myanmar. And uh, more recently, certain Chinese officials visited the Rohingya camps as well. So, uh, so how do you think China wishes to play a role in the situation? if it isn't playing a role already? Well, China states that it prefers stability in its neighborhood. 
Mm-hmm. So when this crisis uh, erupted in its latest phase in 2017, and there was a lot of disturbance and problems, mm-hmm. the Chinese were worried. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were worried that this could affect uh, this could affect negatively their relationship mm-hmm. with both Myanmar and Bangladesh. Mm-hmm. So they came forward pretending to be the great mediators between the mm-hmm. two countries. Nobody was fooled by that pretension, and mm-hmm. both countries realized. Mm-hmm. that fundamentally chinese really support myanmar in a big way mm-hmm. uh, and therefore um, china has not had any great success and the problem remains exactly where it is mm-hmm. uh, the central issue that we have to remember is that a problem of this kind where a large number of people of one country have found their way mm-hmm. into the neighboring country mm-hmm. that only a bilateral solution is possible Mm-hmm. And the other neighboring countries, be that India, China, and the rest of them, ASEAN also, mm-hmm. they can only play uh, a facilitatory, indirect, diplomatic role. Mm-hmm. Uh, understood, sir. Uh, you mentioned something very interesting. You say that uh, China prefers stability in its uh, neighboring countries. However, that seems very strange, considering uh, that recently it has been pointed out that China is responsible for funding certain insurgent groups in Myanmar. And uh, that has um, distanced Myanmar's uh, military leaders from the the Communist Party in China. Uh, What can you tell us about that? Well, that's a very uh, interesting question. Uh, China is a large and complex society. It does not follow a linear uh, set of interests. It has uh, many interests. Some of them may look contradictory. Now, Mm -hmm. you're referring specifically to China-Myanmar relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, With regard to Myanmar, China does come forward and help them on a number of projects, infrastructure, development, Mm -hmm. uh, defense, and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, China also has a a long history of helping a number of anti-government rebels, rebel groups Mm -hmm. operating in the northern region and the Rakhine region. Mm -hmm. So here the intention is very clear. China wants to use these rebels Mm -hmm. as a lever to put pressure on the central government in Myanmar. Uh, So as long as the government plays ball, the rebels lie low. Mm -hmm. When uh, the government does not play ball, Mm -hmm. uh, the rebels uh, get uh, more and more support from Beijing. That is the standard line and policy for a long time. Uh, so, sir, now that Myanmar seems to have figured it out and uh, we, we see that there are also tensions between uh, Myanmar and China, not only in uh, the, the military front, but also in certain strategic projects front, uh, the, the, uh, there are several transportation networks that China is funding and there are certain tensions over there. Uh, do you think that this entire situation will push Myanmar to India's side? And I'm asking this question uh, because of the recent tensions between India and China. So what role do you think Myanmar can play in that? Well, I wish I could um, agree with you, but I think let us take you just a bit deeper into the complexities of Myanmar uh, politics and Myanmar's external relations. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, uh, Myanmar is governed by a kind of a diarchy where the democratic government led by Aung San Suu Kyi Mm -hmm. is in the front seat. But it does not have all the powers. The powers mm-hmm. it has to share with the military, mm-hmm. uh, which also is a very important player. Mm-hmm. So it is now the military which is getting more and more discontented mm-hmm. with the Chinese policy towards uh, Myanmar. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Chinese government has been busy cultivating the Aung San Suu Kyi government mm-hmm. and creating, as you rightly pointed out, the China Myanmar economic corridor. Mm-hmm. So there is. On the one hand, uh, a stress on greater economic cooperation. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, because of the policy towards a number of insurgent groups in Myanmar, mm-hmm. it has created a security situation which is causing worry mm-hmm. to the military government. In that light, mm-hmm. uh, I think uh, as far as India is concerned, mm-hmm. India strongly believes in following uh, the policy of non-interference in the internal affairs of mm-hmm. Myanmar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we are very hopeful mm-hmm. that the traditional uh, rebalancing mm-hmm. impulse of Myanmar mm-hmm. will make it see that mm-hmm. India is a friendly country, it is a benign country, it does not want dominance, whereas others have a different idea. Mm-hmm. Understood, sir. So this brings us to the end of the 10 minutes. 
uh, once again, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. Thank and you. we'll definitely speak with you soon. Thank, thank you, you very much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Akshay.